Hey everybody, it's uh, Sean from Bike Tailor. Uh, so today we are looking at a like a partial build. Um, so what I'll do is I'll I'll take you around, show you what's uh, the build, uh, what we're looking at, um, and uh, yeah, just take you from there. So we have this uh, open wide. Uh, so it's the open wide uh, model um, that we're going to be building. Um, I've already just partially installed a few things just because I needed to check if we had the right components and we may or may not. I'll talk to you about that in a second. Um, but yeah, I'll have to pull them all off anyway to reinstall properly. Uh, but yeah, uh, we've got the bike. Uh, we don't have any wheels, chain, cassette, any of that stuff. So all we're going to be doing is installing the bottom bracket and cranks, uh, rear derailleur chain. Actually, no chain, don't have the chain. Um, rear derailleur, uh, we'll install the disc brakes, so the, the calipers and the levers. Uh, we'll do our best job to bleed them, uh, just using bleed blocks. Um, and then uh, install, uh, you know, the headset, spaces, all of that stuff properly. Um, yeah, so what we're looking at right now, uh, we're gonna be running like something like three or four centimeters under the stem to start with. Uh, I've got the measurements from the customer, so I'll get that all in the right spot. And why I just did this uh, to start with was just to see if we've got enough cable. Um, so like the front one uh, is maybe gonna be just long enough. So I've gotta put the levers on and just see if the cable's gonna be long enough that it won't impinge. I think we're good actually, even just looking at it like this, because that lever's gonna sit somewhere here. So I think we're good there. And then the same with the rear. Um, rear, I, I gotta look properly. Um, I was just trying to install this uh, over it so that it goes into the frame and uh, doesn't rattle, so it doesn't drive them crazy on the uh, the open roads. There we go. Ba -dum -boom. Uh, yeah, so I'll just keep uh, getting a few things sorted and come back and forth with the video. Alright, so I've uh, just attached this uh, caliper to the rear so that we're not pulling it closer than it needs to be. Um, I managed to slide that covering, that foam, just all the way down. Um, and we've put in the little port, the cable port. Uh, that goes over there that secures the cable so we could just then check and see the cable length and even with it fully turned it's looking like we're pretty good so luckily won't need new cables uh, so now I will uh, get the actual measurements and we'll look at cutting the steerer down all right, so I got the measurements and it's actually a little bit lower, which, which looks better. I'm actually happier with only 15 mil under the stem. Um, Cause it's a brand new bike. We're gonna leave 15 mil above the stem. Uh, it's quite a different geo to a lot of the other bikes this guy's been riding. So we're gonna leave enough that he can go up or down comfortably. So now we're gonna cut the steerer. So uh, we obviously gotta measure how much we're cutting off and always make sure you put the uh, compression plug in and measure from that because we obviously need to account for that amount of space when we're cutting as well. So we're gonna measure from the top of that to the top of that. And uh, then we need about two or three mil extra so that we got space to actually cr create the compression when you're adjusting your headset. So you need to leave a little bit of space more. So. So we're gonna go from the top of that compression plug to there, measure that, add about two or three mil, and that's where the cut will be. All right, so we've cut it down. Um, as you can see, we've got uh, just that little bit of space, right? Uh, five mil. So we've got just enough that now we can actually use the compression cap to uh, get the right adjustment in that headset. So that's all cut. We're good looking, looking good there. The first little problem that we're running into is, uh, so you've got this cable guide that uh, sits into the frame, uh, looks nice in there, uh, but there's a little screw that secures it in place, uh, and that's the hole that it needs to go into. Unfortunately, this frame hasn't been drilled well, so you can see that screw hole is just a little bit too high. 
uh, for when I'm trying to get the screw in. I just cannot get it in there. So I'm probably going to have to just uh, widen this hole a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to get a little bit of sandpaper, put it on a tiny Allen key and just try and enlarge the hole vertically so that we can actually get to that hole. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> these little things are often the most frustrating parts of builds because something as simple as putting a little screw in and uh, carrying on with it, which should take 10 seconds, has taken me 20 minutes because the, like we explained, the, uh, the screw was not lining up with the hole. So I've had to enlarge it ever so slightly. Um, and then it's still been really difficult to do without cross threading it because it's a tiny, tiny little screw. Uh, note to anybody building a frame out there, please don't put uh, I don't even know what this is. This is a one and a half, I think, one and a half mil Allen key. It's so little that it's almost impossible that somebody's not going to in the future round this hole. So you got to be so careful. And even if you're being really careful, uh, it's it's just a really shallow hole. Don't use such little things. You, like three mil should be the smallest that you're going. Anyway, rant over. I'll turn the camera around and just show you that it's all looking good. Uh, so there we go. We've managed to get it in there um, uh, and it, it's all nice and tight there. But yeah, as I say, I've put a ton of grease on that as well so that hopefully it doesn't rust or not. Uh, what well, is actually steel this, that's aluminium, but hopefully we don't have corrosion and an issue with getting it out in the future if somebody needs to, but I've greased up uh, the thread really well so hoping that's fine and I haven't over tightened um, I'll show you what I use to uh, open it up so I actually had a little two millimeter end mill um, I don't have a mill but I've still got a lathe that I can use it on um, anyway so I just put it in the drill and with the end mill it, it's actually quite easy to control the cut so I just went really slowly and just elongated it uh, up a little bit and uh, looking good so we got a small conundrum. We want to work out, do we have the bars in the right angle? Cause they're kind of a, a weird gravel bar. So do I have them angled correctly? Um, but I don't have wheels. So I can't work out if the bike is tilted correctly. So we got it in the stand. We're just going to measure from the dropouts there and from there. And we want to get them equal straight down to the ground. If that's equal, then we should have the bike level. So I'll do that now and then we'll get these bars leveled out correctly because right now I, I had them set up by uh, the markings on the bar at like exactly in the middle and they look like they're just tilted far too much that way so I'm, I'm assuming we're gonna have to bring them back but let's get the bike level first and then do that so while we had the uh, bike level um, I did did land up having to tilt the bars back quite a bit so that red line in there is actually where I had it centered on on the middle of the stem um, so we've brought them back which gets the bars to a position that I feel is about right uh, almost flat on the top there and a little bit of a, a down slope there for when you in the drops um, now what we're doing is positioning the hoods sorry for all the noise um, the hoods generally uh, on a gravel bike I'd want them a little bit above flat because um, you need a slightly more comfortable position so you can see I've got them a little bit above. Um, these bars sweep out quite a long way, so they are actually tilted in quite a long way too, uh, which, which is an interesting position. Um, so we've positioned those close, uh, as close as we can. Um, for now, uh, I'm pretty happy with this one. So what I'm gonna land up doing is getting out my uh, tool that I can use to make sure that the other one is exactly in the same position. Um, we'll have a look at that in a second. So yeah, we're just putting the hydro lines through the bars. Another really fiddly job that always takes time. Uh, we got these ports underneath here. So it's in and out. They're not easy to get in and out. Uh, so I've fed it through and had to fish it out with some old spokes. Um, what's kind of difficult too with hydro lines is uh, normally I would definitely have said to put the front brake over the uh, the rear brake line here, um, and that would just look better. But the these hoses, they're just kind of, uh, they have like an elasticity to them, and if they've been bent in a certain way or twisted, it can be really difficult to get them to sit nice. And even now, it looks kind of all right, but as soon as you turn the bars 
you see what happens that that rear brake hose shoots up nice and high, like not nice and high horrible so what we want to do is keep it that it stays there on return but it's uh do you see it's going up like that and then it kind of is coming down on the return i guess but it's it's moving in a weird weird way as you go up the bars uh sorry turn the bars there so um i'm not super stoked on this i would prefer this to go over the top of this uh i'm just not sure if it's gonna sit well so i'll just have a little think so while i'm pondering uh if if i run the cables out well or not i wanted to just uh check that i've got the levers set the same so we're happy with this one so we want to set this one to be even with this one in terms of height um, and angle and a few things the way to do it is uh is this tool from abby tools um it's called the lever setter it's it's one of those tools that like now that i have it i'm like how did this thing not exist before they made it it's 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 so simple and yet really clever all that you'll end up doing is uh removing this guy over here Oop, the four oh, there it is so you just remove this then you take the lever setter Thread that in where that uh, compression cap goes. And then you take your hanger tool. So I've got this really nice Abbey Tools one, but you can use any hanger tool. Uh, you thread it in, which is gonna be hard to do one-handed, so one second. All right, so now that you've got that in, uh, you set your hanger tool up. And then, uh, so this this is the lever we want to set it off. So we pick a point on the lever and uh, we set it that way. So uh, where's a good point? We'll go just to this front corner here uh, and set it up there. So all right. So we've got it set up to just contact just above the corner there. Um, and now if we come across to this side, we can see it's not in the same space, spot. So it should be contacting up over here. So we'll move this lever around until we get that contacting in the right spot. And so just showing you with, even with just an old park tools one that it uh, does indeed work. So we've got that one lined up to the corner there nicely and then we come across and it's the same on that side so great little tool for anybody uh you know i think it's maybe 50 bucks or something sounds like a lot of money for what it is but one of the best tools i have in my tool case okay we're at the connecting the hoses uh so what we're gonna do is um cut the hoses uh with SRAM, uh, you need to go a little bit deeper for where the olives actually seat. So we'll be cutting it around about there and the same on the other side. Um, and and then we'll connect them and then just check with uh, with these uh, spaces in there if uh, we've got enough pressure there or not, or if, we, if we need to add fluid or not. So uh, I'll do that now. So uh, I had the luxury of having uh, a couple of, two or three of these 10 mils and uh shram it's always difficult connecting the hose because that's a 10 millimeter uh fitting there and that's an eight millimeter so when you're threading uh that in to uh compress the olive and uh, make a seal with the hose uh, you need to hold this part still or it will spin um and usually with uh let me find another one it's like a normal 10 mil uh it, you've got to lift this bit so high out of the lever that it lands up pulling the hose out. So um, I've just taken that to my belt sander and flattened it as much as I can so that I can get under there without having to lift it really high. Uh, good little tool. All right, so we have the hoses connected uh, nicely uh, with the pad spaces in there. We got good lever action. About the same on both sides so pretty hard to adjust that without the wheels being in and just just checking properly but that should be pretty close um all right headset's done that's done so now we are looking at doing the bottom bracket here we go 
All right, so this is the bottom bracket that the customer has given me. I've, I've never heard of this brand piston, but it looks nice enough. Uh, threads in and is press fit. Um, so what I will do is just do a really quick test run to see how easily it's pushing in. If it pushes in a bit easily, uh, then I'll add a bit of Loctite, uh, press them in. Uh, we'll put some copper paste in here so that this never seizes. Uh, and then just uh, get the cranks in and go from there. All right, so they do feel a little bit on the loose side. So, uh, you know, uh, I'm barely pushing that and I can see I'm pushing it in. So I think what I'm gonna do is, yeah, we're gonna add some Loctite 609 to uh, the mating surfaces on both sides. Um, yeah, and then we'll grab our tool here to press it in. Uh, Love this tool. Uh, these have all the different sizes. So for a uh, 46 mil out of there, we got the 46 on, on this at some point. Where is it? So there's your 46. And then those are for your dub, uh, your drift. So we'll push, push in one side and then we'll thread in the other side. All right. So that side went in really easily. I probably could have pressed in with my hands, which is always a little bit of a worry. It's, uh, Probably a little bit on the loose side, but hopefully the Loctite on both sides is going to do enough to, to hold it hold it in there and not move around and creak. Um, now we're going to apply some uh, copper paste uh, copper paste to the threads. Just it's an anti seize, just so that never locks up. Uh, um, yeah, so I'll put some of that on now. Um, just put it all over evenly over the threads, and then we'll start to thread that side into the other side. All right, so we pressed this one in and we threaded this one in. Um, they both feel like they are spinning nicely. Uh, so now we are going to install the cranks. All right, so with the cranks, uh, we don't know what the spacing is going to look like. So uh, grease it up nicely, grease it up in there. We're going to fit this through with the adjustment collar loose all the way screwed out. Push it through, install the cranks, and then we'll have a look and see if it's nicely centered, if there's any play in what we got to do, if we need to add any spaces or not. So let's do that now and see what it's looking like. Um, uh, with the SRAM cranks, uh, you definitely want to apply some of that anti-seize uh, copper paste or something like that uh, to this part here, to this, this bolt. Uh, they tend to seize up pretty badly. Uh, they can be incredibly difficult to get off, um, especially because you're tightening up to 50, 56 Newton meters uh, is recommended. So I always apply some copper uh, anti-seize to over here and onto the bolt there so that we don't have any issues. So we've installed this side, um, talked it up to 56 Newton meters, and then we've measured uh, to a central point there and it's even on both sides. So we just kind of got lucky that time. We didn't need any spacers, um, which is great. Uh, so that's, Bottom bracket installed, uh, cranks installed. So now we need to install the uh, hanger uh, for the rear derailleur, which on this bike uh, slots in like that. And there is this bolt, which we will talk up to 10 Newton meters on this side. And then we put your derailleur on and then we're almost finished this build, I think. It's just the derailleur and the saddle and the rest the customer is happy to do himself. So let's get the hanger on and the derailleur and uh, we'll come back to it at that point. So there we go. We've uh, installed the hanger to the 10 Newton meters, put the derailleur on. That's all looking good. Uh, I'm gonna have to remind him just to check his B limit, uh, B screw, sorry, um, and make sure the distances are all set up correctly. Uh, installed the axle just to make sure that that's all fine so all grease so that's all looking good and then we have put the saddle on <coughs> excuse me um, I've put it as level as I can while it's in the stand and got all the distances right we we I have uh, wrapped the bars and uh, this is probably my new favorite bar tape uh, I've never used it before um, but it is 
really easy to wrap it was great some some sort of leather feel ones in that are really hard to wrap they don't stretch this one had just enough stretch it's got this really nice velvet uh, texture which will give you grip in all sorts of conditions it just feels good uh, on the hands as well it's got a little bit of cushion without being excessive uh, so yeah this is definitely my new favorite bar tape but uh, it's by Richie uh, hashtag not sponsored but uh, I don't even know who sells it in Australia, but it's the, how do you say that? Gazos? Gazos Bar Tape by Richie. It's uh, no idea how much it costs, but wraps really nicely, feels really good. I'll, uh, I'll definitely be getting some of this for my bikes. Uh, so that brings us to the end of the build as far as I will be uh, doing. I'll uh, take the bike to the customer tonight, Russell. Um, and uh, if we're lucky, he might have some time and we can throw some wheels in and just see what it looks like fully built up. But uh, it's, been, it's been a good one. As always, thanks for joining me on this uh, little build. Uh, hopefully you got something out of it. Uh, if, if you didn't learn anything, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm teaching that much. Uh, if you are watching and you're enjoying them, please leave a comment and let me know if, uh, if, if this stuff's good, if you want more or less detail, do you just want to see the bike, do you just not care about any of the other stuff, I'd love to know. Uh, but yeah, thanks for joining, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.